Hello there, everybody. Welcome to a brand new series. We've got Soul Key spawning here in the top right hand corner and Snow in the bottom left. I've been communicating with some people, some casters from China who have been organizing big series between Chinese players and Korean players and also between Korean players as well. And this is one of those Soul Key played 10 games against Snow in May of 2024. This is a series that you won't find anywhere else aside from the Chinese internet. Uh, if you can even find it there, it would be a challenge. I had a hard time finding out about or finding this series uh, after I heard about it. I went online and looked basically everywhere I could. Had a very hard time figuring it out, but I talked to Zero and he helped me get in touch. That's Zero from the BSL. He helped me get in touch with these Chinese organizers who, uh, after going back and forth for a little bit, uh, sent me a big package of replays. So I'm really excited to bring this to you guys. This should be a lot of fun. This is very similar to an Ultimate Battle series where they just play 10 games and there's no uh, limit to the number of games or there's no, excuse me, it's not like a regular series, right? You have to play all 10 games and each game is worth a bit of money. So a bit different than any sort of tournament. It's just a big fat series of 10 games in a row between these two and it should be a lot of fun to watch. So we've got Soul Key. He's opened up with a pretty normal build thus far. He grabbed this gas just a little bit after the 230 mark. He's got a couple lings out on the map. It's a forge expand for snow. And yeah, everything very normal. Very, very normal here to start things off on Radeon cross map position. This could become a really big game. Or, you know, it could end in a Hydra bust or some sort of cheeky play from Snow. We'll see what he wants to pull out in this game. Now, this is right after the ASL victory. Sol Solky's second ASL victory. So he is at the absolute top of the world. Uh, this could have been the finals, right? If Snow had beaten Hero, then we could have seen the finals with uh, Soul Key versus Snow. That would have been an epic finals, and we're going to get a little taste of what that might have looked like here. Of course, different format and everything. They're all playing online as well and not in person. But it is a nice little uh, tidbit there. This could have been that finals. Now the f Zealot is moving out on the map. Heading around where the probe. The probe's actually drawing the lings into a kind of a strange position here. He's moving them over to the left hand side. Now he's looping back around. Looks like he's going to get caught. As soon as that gets caught, the Zealot heads directly back home. Second Zealot here out in the front as well. Just uh, obfuscating out on the map. Maybe looking for an overlord. If he can find this overlord and spot exactly where it's at, then he could track it down with the Corsair, but he's not going for Corsair. He's going directly into DT. All right. This is some of that cheeky play I was talking about. He's not mining the second gas, which is a little bit off-putting. Okay, there we go. He will get that second gas online. You need all this gas for sure if you want to pump out DTs right now. The Overlords didn't fly into the main, right? Soul Key didn't choose to sacrifice the Overlord to get the all-important information in the main. But he will kind of be able to figure it out in just a few moments. Once the... Oh, wait. There's a Starport now. Or Stargate. What? Okay. This would throw me for a loop if I was playing a Soul Key. Because the moment you don't see any Corsairs coming out and it hits six minutes, you really got to be scratching your head like, what exactly is happening right now? Where am I at in this game? Zealots just chilling out over here. 
Two are going to poke into the natural or poke into the third while drawing these lings over to this base. He's going to try and run by into the main. One drone has already gone down. Going to target the sunken colony. These zealots are going to run by. Oh, I thought they were going to run by into the main, but it seems like Snow's not really paying attention to that, unfortunately. He's paying attention over here. And so these zealots will get taken care of pretty reasonably because the sunken colony got enough hits. Got quite a few hits there. The lings are just going to pop out and finish this off. We have a DT moving into position, but it's not going to be able to slip by, I don't think. Wait a minute. Can he actually get in here? The lings are going to block. Oh, it looks like he gets it. Yeah, it does go down. That is unfortunate for Snow. Kind of a gamble. A bit of a gamble game here from snow he picked off a drone or two but now he can't really do much with this dt let's see if we can get a couple of kills at least one two three four okay that's some that's, yeah, hey hey what what pretty good damage not bad not bad Ooh, corsair goes down in the main base though yeah we'll take that we'll take that one corsair lost a oh, group of mutas coming out Plus one attack for these Corsairs is starting. One Corsair back at home and an Archon. Good move here from Snow. Realizing his real weakness right now is that anti-air. Doesn't have enough of it just yet. Can't handle the Scourge coming in with the Mutas and comboing to take out the Corsairs. So having the Archon just gives you that little extra oomph. Makes it harder to engage. But well, we're going to see Solki move to the natural. Try to pick off this cannon. He will. But can he get any more? One probe is not good enough. Not good enough. One cannon, one probe. Very good defense out of snow, though. He's maneuvered this Archon into the right spot. Nice and quick. It's easy to get caught on the probes and get caught on the buildings as you're moving the Archon around in your, in your base. It's good to see it. Snow get that clunky unit into position quickly enough to deal with that attack. Not take too much damage. And now, when is his move out? And will he be trying to take a third? Or is this a two base all in push? Hard to tell the difference as a Zerg player. I'm often wondering what exactly is gonna be coming at me in the next couple of minutes. He's moving out with just a very small number of Zealots and one Archon. DT's here as well, so it's very hard to engage with the Lings, but back at home, there's a good chunk of Hydras. We have Sunken Colonies. We're behind a wall as well. And there are Mutas flying around that could potentially snipe any Templar that are moving out. So it's very hard to engage anywhere. It'll give Sulky plenty of time to build up his drone count. Right now, he's not producing any drones. But I imagine he will be soon. He's actually making a lot more Hydras. Does he want to try and contest the third? If that's indeed the plan. We're at 39 workers. I guess that's enough. Oh, he adds on six more. See, I thought he would go to at least 45. He adds exactly 6 to make it exactly 45. That's, um... It's like the magic number, I suppose. Very hard to tell how many drones you have as a Zerg player or at, at, really in any matchup. But you can kind of look at the time if you're a Terran or a Protoss player. Just look at looking at the time and knowing that you've been making workers the whole time. You kind of know how many workers you should have. It's a little bit more of a finer balance as a Zerg player because you're not always constantly making drones. You're not always constantly making workers. So you do have to keep that in mind and constantly check to make sure, okay, do I have enough drones? Do I have enough drones? Yeah, that looks, that looks about good right there. Jostling for position over at the third base. No, getting prepared to take that. Probe is coming out. But a few gateways are up, and the dragon count will start to rise now. Been primarily Zealot Templar Archon thus far. 
but with this big round of dragons coming in oh we finally will add some anti-air not quick enough though a templar gets sniped then will this will that be enough for sulky to go in well he's got more mutas he was coming in with just a small group of mutas i like it just in case there was a dark archon waiting for him there's a dark archon waiting and the maelstrom goes down it's not as backbreaking for soul key to deal with losing five mutas instead of you know this full 10. now he's got the 10 mutas coming in looking for templar let's see what he can get going after one oh my good gosh wow that was bad i mean we've got no mutas left this is rough now a storm should come down on these uh hydras as they try to push forward yeah storm in the back line there ouch that was painful this has not gone well for soliki at all good calm play here from snow he handles that mutilisk attack with ease didn't lose a second templar and now his third base is all but guaranteed his dragoon count is starting to rise he's got to be careful with this rally point gotta defend both areas at the same time as well you can't just allow your uh, cannons to go down while you're fighting this army here on the right hand side pretty good pull away there but the storms did a lot of damage zealots are starting to be erased but there's still one more storm and a good number of dragoons should be able to hold all of this back very well played here on both sides taking a reasonable trade but the earlier bad trade from sulky is R rippling the ripple effect of that is that this push is much weaker and we're just not going to see hardly any progress made by sulky over in this natural at this rally point trying to come out here he does not have storms this is a big moment if S uh, snow engages without storm he could throw his advantage completely can see we're like 50 almost 60 supply ahead as snow right now his army is very big he just needs storm to back it up his one one upgrades to the one o about to be two o of soul key more and more hydras being made he has not taken a fourth base just yet he is pretty all in at this point he's making a good clutch of lurkers eight lurkers on the way and i think we're gonna see him just go this is 60 supply disadvantage it's uh, a very rough position right now for sulky if this doesn't work he's likely to tap out here we go running in for some snipes on templar before this engagement starts two get picked off immediately and there's not too many more behind this how many storms have we got we've got maybe three storms during this next fight that is it there's another templar over on this left hand side but i don't think he can be brought to bear in time for this very low on that hp as well could easily be sniped great kill on the observer good storm on that left hand side as well zealots are engaging just outside of range of the lurkers fighting that hydra group on the right hand side lurkers are going to spread out and take a better position here slowly creeping forward is sulky he's just sending out more and more hydras right now there's zealots denying a fourth base but that's just not even in the mind of sulky at the moment he is completely hell-bent on destroying this protoss player right here right now denying the third base three zealots are going to make their way around can they actually do anything though with the defensive position that's been set up at home for sulky he should be able to handle this. I just moving over to this side. He's got to snipe the Templar. The Templar casts his storm. He might have enough for a second. No, he does not. One dark Ar uh, Templar is actually saving the day right now for snow. Some more lurkers coming out. Dragoon number is starting to thin out a little bit, but the Hydra number is incredibly low. And with just a few zealots coming up to tank the damage. Lurkers are going to start to fall. Dragoons at the front line are standing strong. And this push has been broken. Everything's going to have to be thrown back here for Solaki. And it's likely we'll see a tap out soon. Yeah, there it is. He gives up. GG. 
Wow, I'm surprised to see Sulky gamble like this. Very surprised to see him just throw everything into a three base push when he's so strong in the late game. I feel like had he just not dove in and tried to kill Templar, if he had built up a bunch more drones and gone into a fourth base, I think he would have had a much better shot in this game. Four base versus three base of snow. Um, yeah, that's that's a bit surprising. That's an interesting way to open game number one. We get some more great games here in this series, guys. We're going to jump into game number two of ten. Let me remind you, ten games between these two. So maybe they don't want to. Or maybe Sulky doesn't want to tire himself out here in game number one. Just going to let it go. He tried. He did his best. Let's get ready for the next one. All right, game number two here. Snow in the bottom right-hand corner. Soul Key in the top left. This is awesome, guys. The announcement for the PSL I just made, I just showed on my channel uh, their announcement. That's going on right now. We've got flashback in the picture. KCM still going strong. ASL still going strong. Now we've got this series as well and all the series that BSL is putting together. The race challenge series and all that good stuff. It's a great time to be a Brood War fan. It is a fantastic time to be a Brood War fan. Shout out to everybody who helped me to put this together, by the way. I don't know if they want to be named or if they prefer to be anonymous, but thank you guys. Those of you who made this a possibility. This is interesting. What is Sulky doing right now? He just took, without even being scouted or scouting his opponent, he took top center hatchery as, what was this, a 12 hatch or 11 hatch? That is wild to me. Absolutely wild. That was a 12 hatch. He's going to find out that his opponent is down bottom right which i don't know what he would have done if snow is top right it would have been a pretty rough situation for him uh, as well it would have been pretty tough for soul key had this been like a two gate or something like that when you're this spread apart and a two gates coming at you Can be very difficult to hold. Now going to grab his third. There's the 2 minute 50 gas timing. Nexus starts on the side of Snow. So he's going to move out with two Zealots now. One probe here to combo with them. The Lings are already on the way though. So it's not going to make it here in time to punish at all. In fact, four sets of Lings are on the way. And the drone scouted everything. So he knows what's coming. The Zealots are going to loop around, not reveal themselves to the drone or the Overlord, and hide themselves out on the map, or maybe head back home. Feels like he's probably forced enough of a response. Enough links have been produced, where he's going to be better served with these Zealots uh, heading back to this wall, helping him to stay safe as he skips the forge. Oh, he actually built it on high ground. Never mind. He didn't skip it. Thought he built the Cybernetic Core before the forge, but that's not the case. We've got a f one probe running around, just trying to be annoying. A lot of links were made here. Six. This is 11. So 12 links were made to deal with two Zealots. And the Zealots got home safe. So, I mean, that's a great trade. Great, great trade for Snow. As long as he can keep his wall alive and not let the lings in then this is an amazing trade for him really slowing down the economy of soul key and keeping his own army value uh, at the maximum chugging along in his build right now he's gonna get the stargate out very soon we don't have a layer that's something to mention no layer at all um just went for ling speed so we're we gonna have like a ling all in play it's like barely building or barely mining any gas. Where are the buildings? Okay, there's a hatchery. 
Is he going to start a Hydralis Den? I think so. But it's not for a bust. He's going to need the Hydras just to hold off this Corsair, which is coming soon. The 12 Lings finally picked off that a pesky probe, but they can't really do anything at this wall. The one cannon should be enough. He might even start a second just to be safe. But even that, I mean, that's that's a bit of overkill. All he really needs to do is just stay here tucked. And the 12 lings really won't do much. There's the second cannon. He might even cancel this. If he sends the Corsair cross map and he sees the number of drones at the third, plus the extra hatchery, I think he might cancel. Hydroden is done. Two Hydras are about to pop out. Perfect timing on these Hydras, by the way. Absolutely perfect. And the Overlords are in the right position. These ones are kind of obfuscating, hiding themselves out on the map. Making sure that uh, they don't die too quickly. We don't want them to get killed off right away. If he, you know, runs around and searches for them for a long time, and that'll buy us some time. That'll uh, give us some unharassed free time with those... Uh, the, the Corsair is kind of out of the picture. Uh, and eventually they probably will go down. Like this will maybe find this one in the bottom left. Yeah, most likely. And then this Corsair will go down there as well. But he won't be harassing over here. Um, so that's that's an okay sacrifice. These overlords pretty much already did their job. They're not going to make it back home. Pretty much no matter what. I wonder if this is going to be a 9 minute timing is he gonna try and get in and kill snow right before his uh templar come through because i don't think that's gonna work it's probably not gonna be that because we don't have overlords on the other side of the map we did not have the ability I'm gonna catch this one as well that's nice we just don't have the ability to bring detection to the front of the base of snow we have to get overlord speed overlord speed is super necessary he's managed to crank out a lot of drones during this time a lot a lot of drones and he's even going for more he's gonna get up to 40 right away this is very very fast droning from soul key and he'll probably add on another hatch in just a moment there it is six hatch hydro production has begun he could add a Spire as well, but he might not. Okay, he did. Okay, where is it? I don't even see it. Oh, there it is right there. <laughs> All right, he does have a Spire. So that's going to be spotted by Sol Snow. That's a big spot. He might go for a Dark Archon. Dark Archon might be the correct choice. He is building another... Oh. Corsair, which I'm a little bit surprised about, but it's fine. If he just goes for a big Corsair fleet, it's just as good, uh, if not better, than a Dark Archon because you can you can chase the mutas, you can follow them. Um, with the Dark Archon, you're kind of relegated to just waiting for the mutas to fly in, and then you try to take the fight with them, or you try to lock them down, and you have to have a storm as well. It's a few too many hydras at the front and the upgrades are on the way for sure so soul key is looking very good it's not like he he looks like he's gonna win right now but he's already at 45 workers he's got full saturation on three bases and he can just make only units from this time units and overlords that is it hydras lings lurkers we should see him actually take a fourth base very soon yeah there's that drone moving out this is all on par this is all timed out very nicely for soul key and it's just about time to move out and look to see when snow takes that next base we can chase the zealots around they're not a threat to us at this point in the game too many hydras have been produced what's a real threat is of course the dt and then also some templar walking across the map with any sort of army whether it's zealots just a few dragoons mixed in or a full dragoon zealot army 
with Templar. The Templar are the scary part. So we'll have to be checking to see. Out on the map, chasing back the army of Snow to make sure that those Templar aren't traversing the map. Now, Snow is going to move out with his Corsairs. He's got five. Good control there so far. He's going to see what he can see with these Corsairs. Maybe pick off an Overlord or two. There are a few scattered around looking out for uh, army movements. We'll see the probe moving towards that third base, plus the army over here as well. Just a sacrificial overlord flying in to see exactly what his opponent is up to. And he gets to see everything. He should be moving forward with confidence now. Knowing that no information is hidden. Lurkers are now in high ground. He has a very nice setup. He'll be adding lurkers onto this base. This is your big, these are your big areas of vulnerability on this map. This area here, this area here, and this area here. Now this area is probably the hardest to hold, but it's also the most dangerous to attack into as a Protoss. Because as you move in this way, reinforcements can come and hit you from the side, and reinforcements can come and hit you from this side as well. So it is quite dangerous to attack in this way. Attacking up here, it's not as likely for you to get surrounded. Same with this way. If you're attacking in this way, this is so tight. The Zerg shoving their forces through there, you can just storm that all to death. So we might end up seeing him push this direction. But this is also, I mean, maybe he'll just skirmish here. If he just skirmishes here and he doesn't push all the way forward, then it's completely fine. And we know that Snow is very good with skirmishing uh, his army versus Zerg players. The third base is now online. I think he was considering taking the fourth right away. I saw some movement around there. There's the probe heading out right as I say that. More Dragoons are going to be rallied forward. Small contingent of counterattacklings heading towards this third, but they'll likely be stopped. Oh. Okay, they're actually going to send down to the fourth. They are going to be killed by this DT. The probe does go down, which is a nice little pickup there. The probe being slowed from taking that Nexus, but not for very long. We are going to be able to get that probe over to the fourth base in just a moment. And once uh, Protoss is on fourth ba four bases, and it doesn't seem like Sulky is ready to attempt well six kills on this templar he's been shooting this from high ground or from low ground pretty pretty rough losses there great snipes with these lings by sulky he's already gotten two maybe a third oh man that's so hard to do honestly getting your lings to run forward and keep attacking like that they so often just want to stop and um just not move forward or attack the templar you have to keep clicking perfectly Otherwise, they're going to just attack whatever else is around them. Templars are very low priority uh, for going on the attack. And more lings heading out in multiple different directions. There are forces ready to deal with that at each base. So I don't think these little ling attack forces will get much done. Maybe kill a cannon or two. And the zealots here need to actually move. No, that's pretty annoying. Crackling upgrade is on the way. Oh my gosh. If he loses this. Oh, dude. Snow, is he actually going to... Oh, man. Well, that... That stinks right there. That is really rough. That was more than halfway done. And now he has to restart this Nexus. So, actually, a big win. Down here at the bottom center for Soul Key. And he doesn't seem to have any qualms about going into late game this time. Last game, he seemed to not really be interested in playing that long game. This time, he is uh, insistent that a long game will be played. There's not going to be any aggression from him for quite a long time. And he's going to be sitting here building up into an extremely scary late game Zerg army. He's already got a ton of hatches out spread around the map. At each of these bases, he's got a Defiler out. Doesn't have Consume just yet, but as soon as that comes online, it's just going to be full-on defense mode. 
from Soul Key. We'll have some Lings getting in here, actually killing quite a few of these cannons. Let's take a look at the upgrades. We haven't seen it for a while. Plus two, plus one. And how are we doing on these upgrades? Yeah, no attack upgrade just yet, but that's about to come online. Crackling is done though. Crack upgrade is done. Dark Swarm, where is it? I haven't seen it just yet. And Snow is trying to push through here. Um, another little engagement over down to the wards, the bottom left. But that's not going to amount to much, it seems. One probe headed down here is going to try and hide in the corner. While the Zealots and Dragoons clear this out so that he can maybe put cannons on his high ground. This will force a response out of Soul Key. He'll either have to attack into this into this base or expand into the top right of his own and i prefer to actually take out this base um if you let this base go up it is just nightmarishly hard you're gonna go into like a 35 minute game for sure so sulky has found a way around the army for now and he's going to look to take out this bottom left hand corner it seems oh maybe he's just gonna take this base really Okay, lurkers are setting up on that high ground. That's not what I was expecting in a soul key at all. I thought he was going to go for it here. He's still waiting on upgrades. Seems like he doesn't have a third evolution. He does, but he's not upgrading Ling attacks, which is really rough. We want to get that plus two Ling attack ASAP. Army here on high ground. Going to deny so Snow from getting up there. Soul key holding that position. Getting his fifth base online. But this is scary. We've got a lot of cannons over at bottom left. Some Templar gateway buildings. I was going to say Templar producing structures because that's what really matters in this matchup. The Zealots are kind of going by the wayside at this point. Getting eaten up by the Lings for the most part. And see how much worse these trades are going now that the upgrades are starting to stack. He does start plus two melee. That's very important. Plus three attack for the Hydras is done. Plus two armor, plus two sh uh, attack done for Protoss. But he hasn't started any other upgrades just yet. Relying on those to carry him through. First big plague of the game. Let me change the colors here so that we can see the plague on these units. And this is, these are kind of cool colors, actually. I'm down with this. Gray Zerg versus yellow Protoss. Sorry, I didn't uh, change that up earlier, but I like the colors now. So rare that we get a decent uh, matchup for colors. Feels like it's just about always brown. Now, maybe that's the uh, doing of the, the brown brew crew, or I'm not really sure. Those guys are everywhere these days. We have Snow taking another base of the center right. And I feel like Sulky's playing this a bit too slow. I don't know what your guys' opinion of this is, but in my mind, he is taking his sweet time uh, getting this top right-hand quadrant of the map set up. And Snow has been unabashedly just throwing down bases left, right, and center. And he's not really that far ahead, I would say. He's like one worker up. And he's been harassed pretty heavily. These lings continuously running in and trying to slow down the bases, but... Looks like he's just going to go ahead and take center left. And then slowly take this mineral only. But Snow is ahead of him and going to try to prevent him from taking top right. Which, I mean, if he doesn't get top right, he loses. But even if he gets top right, Sulky is still going to have a very hard time fighting this out in the late game. Snow is going to get hyper, hyper efficient with his units. A lot more links coming through. The hatchery gets picked off. A lot of zealots going down. But storms are going to be thrown out. And this army can always back away from the lurkers, which are advancing. And there you go. He just backs up and lays down a blanket of storms. Makes it very hard for the Zerg army to push forward. Now falling back towards his base. Just getting out of range of those lurkers is the most important thing. He gets out of range. He re-engages once again. 
and it seems like snow with one more rally could probably break this now that's a big group of lings moving through the middle of the map where is that gonna go it's actually heading down here to the six o'clock can he actually can he kill this there's no templar here he's actually gotta maneuver these lings a little bit better like run them forward to get on top of the cannons great pull with the probes to help deal with this and there's the reaver the reaver pops out he's gonna start to do work clearing out this big attack at the six o'clock and holding onto that base no playing this out very very well a lot of cannons coming up all over the map the amount of mineral income for snow is kind of crazy it's not like we're at 70 probes but i mean does he really need that much i don't think he even needs that much he'd rather have a bigger army probably to deal with all these attacks from zerg some zealots over here gonna clean up these lings and as long as the cannons are warping in the reaver is going to stay and make sure that that doesn't get cancelled now spreading out on this side it's almost like sulky is ready to take top right he's very close i'll say he's really close to taking that base but he just hasn't been able to do it yet it's been slow we lost a defiler over here by the way that's pretty rough the defiler going down is a big thorn in the side for a soul key right now he would love to come up here and and create some havoc or come over here drop a dark swarm or a plague on all that just not able to do it because of that dt but he should have dark swarm maybe a plague or two let's see what he goes for plague on some of these units he actually gets the shuttle which is pretty big however the reavers is going to be pushing through uh, all these defenses meanwhile a counterattack going on over here that base is definitely gonna get taken out so soul key gonna lose this mineral only but trading it for the mineral only of snow now i'm not too happy about this because i feel like soul key is fa falling farther and farther behind in this game although he managed to kill that base i mean it wasn't a very important base and snow is one base up over sulky i mean maybe i guess this one he's got without counting i believe it's even on bases but there's one more gas base because this base has been taken this is way more important than this base of course so sulky is definitely behind but there's still a lot of moves that can be made there's still a lot of things that he can do he just doesn't have drop right now he hasn't been trying to snipe probes with lurker drop or you know go for a big attack into the main to really throw off snow instead he's just been trying to push up towards the center right slowly but surely taking over that area of the map and it's just it's not a winning scenario it's not a winning scenario for Sulky. A great plague there, but if he slowly pushes up into this base, then you know what's going to happen. Snow is going to turtle up in bottom left, hold half the map, and just never let you, the Zerg player, take a reasonable engagement. He's just not going to let it happen. He's going to keep making the ch exchanges as bad as possible. By utilizing Reaver, Cannon, and Templar on high ground to make your life absolutely miserable. And Sulky is about to find out the meaning of the word misery when it comes to trying to break a snow position with Reaver, Templar, and high ground Cannon. There is the Defiler in the back going down. It only gets a flag on one Dragoon before it falls large army here in the middle of the map mostly mostly ling and lurker which is not gonna do very well unfortunately against the reaver composition that's been built uh, that is a lot of archons look at how many units are gonna file in here and look at how few actual kills they end up getting that was so many lings a ton of lurkers as well dark storm comes down 
That's just not the ticket. He's going to come in with another round of lings to try and finish this off. He needs this base so badly. And Snow has just been denying him over and over. We will have a Reaver out. Two Reavers, in fact, to try and keep this fight alive. He's actually going to kill the Hatchery. That's so painful. And Sulky's just going to leave this game. Man, Snow, a killer, even in the late stages. Maybe that's why Sulky didn't want to take the previous game late against Snow, because he is just very powerful, even in a split map situation. So good at skirmishing with the Zerg players. It really did feel, though, like Sulky was being too tentative with his moves. Needed to take the upper right faster or take out this bottom left immediately as it was coming up he just didn't do either of those things and he really struggled to get any damage with counterattacks and to hold this top right hand corner so he ends up getting taken down for the second time in a row snow is on a roll right now going into game number three okay hopping into game number three here we've got sulky in the bottom right hand corner snow in the top left on vermeer great map i'm not sure how this one got cycled out of the map pool this is probably one of the best maps we've had in the previous 10 years i would say really a fantastic map i'm glad that they've got it uh, for this 10 game set we'll see how these two players want to play it out on this very standard map cross map positions it leads you to think we may end up seeing a really long game, a nice macro game out of these two. But anything can happen. Nine pool coming out of Sulky. Will he cancel the gas? Yes, he will. Getting that drone back. He's going to send it back to mine. And he will be popping out six lings once this is done. This will probably go out to scout so that he knows where to send his lings. Oh, really? He's actually just going to send that to mine as well. So he's got 10 drones mining at the moment. He does pull one off. I'm going to send that out to scout now, finally. And back at home, a gateway just finished. So Snow, in this situation, you need to identify this as quickly as possible. And as soon as you find out about it, we need a forge here. Get that forge down as soon as we possibly can and play very defensive. A couple of probes and just keep the zealots together. Don't try to harass your opponent. Just take the lead that you've you've got with the, the build order. And do your best not to allow these links into your main base because that is going to shatter the lead that you've accumulated for yourself. So first zealot is on the way. It's not quite done yet. This probe delaying just slightly and seeing how many lings are being made behind this just of course hatchery drone this is meant to put on some pressure and also punish any risky play from snow if he was delaying his cannon at all you could just get the instant win but here's snow he's actually going to put down the nexus rather than the forge which puts him into a bit of a precarious situation it's not that scary especially if you can just buy a little bit of time for this third zealot to pop out he's done a good job of that just not quite engaging threatening the engagement like this zealot might get caught it's really really close he will retreat back to the ramp this is very well done by snow he's handled this pretty much perfectly there were opportunities maybe for sulky to have an to, to have a run by into the main but for the most part, this is absolutely perfect. That's another great surround there by Sulky. Trying to block the Zealot with the two links on the left-hand side and then catch him with the four links on the right. Oh, another great turn by Sulky. If he had continued to the left here, he would have gotten caught in that position and lost the Zealot most likely. But Sol Snow's early game control has just been fantastic each game. There's still a Zealot and a Probe on the ramp. It is now basically Sulky just keeping these Lings alive. That is the name of the game now because he doesn't want to make any more Lings. It's very important that he keeps these Lings alive and continues to be a threat. 
He hasn't done a good enough job of it. And it appears that Snow is going to go across the map. He feels like he can hold with just these two Zealots back at home. And so more links will have to be made as these three Zealots cross. He sees the links have been pulled back. Ready to surround. And so he returns his Zealots back home. This is a bunch of mind games that are going on right now. Both players trying to get an edge over each other. We don't have a layer. Layer just now starts. So how far along are we? We've got the Cybernetic score just finishing up now. It's looks like he might be building another cannon. No, maybe not. Where's that star gate? There it is. Stargate comes down. Just going to wait for the one cannon. And Sulky made a bunch of links. He hasn't killed even a single zealot. He's stuck at 18 drones with uh, a supply block, kind of slowing him down a bit. He does get the six drones on the way. But there might have been a little hiccup there from Soul Key. Nothing that he can't recover from, but it is painful when you've got six drones in production. You could have had those drones a little bit earlier had you been producing Overlords on time. There's the Spire. It's on the way, but is it in time? I don't feel so. I think this is going to be uh, a little bit late. We may end up losing quite a few overlords. It is cross map, so it does take a long time to get across here. But in games like this, where there's a bunch of back and forth in the early game, and especially with like nine pool, trading lings uh, out for zealots, or at least running around the zealots and, and playing that game, it's hard to get your spire at the same time as that and actually have it be properly timed to deal with the Corsair. You can see the Corsair is crossing the map. Let's see if he starts to hit any overlords before this finishes or not, because that's a, a good indicator of whether an overlord will end up going down. This is a lot closer than I thought it was going to be, by the way. Pretty decently timed uh, Spire by Sulky. And you can see he's hidden most of his overlords around the map. He's not actually got anything in the bases. The bases are empty. And so Snow cannot just fly in, scout the base, and go go ahead and just start killing an Overlord. He finds an Overlord now, but as long as this is Scourge, he shouldn't be able to get that. Yeah, and that is Scourge, so he's not going to be able to get it. That's a little bit unfortunate for Snow. But just good, solid Zerg play out of Sulky. You can see that he has done this before. Wow, he actually did get that. That's surprising i thought that he would be able to save it usually if the spire is done before you start hitting an overlord the scourge will get on top of it in time plus one is done there's quite a lot of lings but they're not really going to do much anymore let's take a look at the sim city back at home Ooh, big group of mutas just popped out all right this is going to get a little bit crazy i think we might be ogre zerging this the Mutas are going to move around the map. And he should wait for the Zealots to get pretty close. Not all the way to his base. But then just engage on top of the Zealots. And start to pick them off. Force a decision out of Snow. Get on top of them when the Zealots are not close enough to easily run back to the cannons. Uh, but they're not too close to the base where they can just start to deal damage immediately. Let's see what happens here. That's quite a lot of Corsairs. My god. Oh, that's a second Stargate. Ah, uh, okay. So this actually might get completely wrecked. Um, the five Muta is not going to do anything. Anything. To this army. It's going to come running in. The Sim City is on point right now. Perfect Sim City for a Zerg player. Snow just going to have to back away immediately. The Hydras are behind the wall as well. Here comes an attack into the front. He's just going to go after the cannons. This is quite a wild play. Just diving right in here with the Lings and Mutas. He's going to be able to kill, I uh, guess, both of the Zealots and both the cannons. Going to kill a lot of probes and force the army back. He's actually not sending the Corsairs back, which is surprising. He's going to come in and try to get as many kills on these Overlords as he can. But back at home, quite a bit is going down. Two Corsairs come back, but nice spread on these. Very nice spread there 
from Soul Key to actually fight down the Corsairs. Pulling back the injured Mutas and everything. This is going very, very well for Soul Key. Even though he's lost a bunch of Overlords, you can see he's killed quite a few probes and he's opening up the front. He's starting to deal more damage to the Zealots and now he can run over his uh, Mutas or over his Hydras and split the Mutas and not allow the Corsairs to actually engage that. We have a Dark Templar here, which should put a damper on things. Two Dark Templars should put a damper on things. He should have an Overlord on the way. Yeah, there's two Overlords coming. He just needs to kill these without losing the DTs, and he should be fine here going after this. Looks like one DT surviving for now. He needs to kill all the Overlords. He does kill all of them, and he can go after the Mutas now. The, the Dark Templar need to get out there and deal their damage. Need to get out here in the front. Oh, there's another Overlord coming from a different angle. And Sulky, is he going to be able to break through? This is quite the gambit, quite the gamble from Sulky, but he's managed to make it work. I'm really surprised that uh, Snow didn't send back his uh, Corsair fleet immediately to deal with the Mutalist threat when it was uh, occurring because he ended up losing all the defenses in his natural and just the rallies of Hydras. Uh, afterwards are enough to take down snow a great game and a, just an excellent execution from soul key you don't really get to see games like that too too often a lot of times these players like soul key are going to be gunning for the late game especially in these cross map positions um hydra bus are much more common than a bus like this it takes a lot of technical know-how to pull something like this off and Soul Key proving to everyone that he definitely has that know-how. He's completely capable of sweeping the legs out from under a very sturdy and strong Protoss player. Excellent, excellent game there. We're going to jump on into game number four. Apocalypse for our next map. We've got Soul Key down here. Snow in the bottom right. Always enjoy this map in PvZ. It's uh maybe a little Zerg favored? I don't know. I don't know if I think it's Zerg favored or not. I bet a lot of Protoss players think it's Zerg favored. I know that Mistch, if you guys know Mistch, he's a, a Polish S rank uh, Protoss player, and he says that this is definitely a, pro uh, a Zerg favored map. Just for the fact that you can hold the high ground right out in front of the Protoss Natural. With Lurkers, as long as you get up there, it's pretty hard to break. Definitely agree, but it's not easy to make that happen either. And it's not easy to hold a Protoss player uh, in place when they can, you know, send a single shuttle around and drop four Zealots in your main or drop DTs on you. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're rallying everything from your main directly to the opponent's base. Uh, you don't have enough defenses back at home. Ooh, are we going to have a cannon rush? Two probes are here. I was not expecting this. Oh, the target's good. Oh, great pullback. They're three HP on that drone. Probably two HP. Uh, in the end there. Oh, he's going to get over this. Perfectly done. Perfectly done. Soul Key absolutely smacks this down. Oh, but he goes so... How did he get that probe over the wall? What are you talking about? Oh, my... He's actually going to pull this off. He's actually going to pull this off. Well, the probe is actually damaged. So maybe uh, the drone can get in here and stop the, the cannon. Maybe. Oh, he can hit that drone. That's so annoying. Okay, the drone gets over. So he just needs to target down the... Oh, target that, target that. Oh my gosh. The cannon's going to finish. Oh man, that probe did so well. That probe did so well, even though it was so low. That is crazy. He blocks the sunken colony from starting. He couldn't get the sunken colony started, and now he's going to get the moving shot. Are you kidding me? Snow gets another kill on another drone. He's going to pull off a cannon rush. In one of the most fantastic fashions I've ever seen in my life. This is ridiculous. How he's managed to pull this off. 
I gotta go back and watch that again after the fact. I think that we're just gonna see the death of Sulky here. His sunken colony is gonna finish after, well after this photon cannon does. He's gonna jump on top of the uh, the cannon here. Oh, he kills the cannon though. That was not a perfect wall. Jumping on top of the cannon back behind these mineral lines. I am shocked. Just gonna take this down very easily after the fact after the sunk or after the cannons have finished up really well held here by sulky but let's take a look at the damages behind this we've got nine drones and our the nexus is on the way there's a cannon back at home there's two cannons in fact he knows how far ahead he is and how many lings there's got to be on the field oh man sulky really went hard on links <laughs> he's still going in the links oh my goodness he really is gonna just all in here he knows how far behind he is even though he held that even though there was a lot of investment from the protoss player these two sunkins are not cheap and all the links that have been made it's sulky is in a horrible position he's gonna go ahead and grab the third it looks like he's got so many links he needs to run by he needs to do a run by and the zealot is almost out. He's got to pull the trigger now. Here we go. The zealot's going to pop at the last second right as this ling attack is coming in. He jumps on top of the cannons. He kills both the cannons. Oh no. Snow not pulling enough probes is actually going to lose this game now. That is wild. He's going to go ahead and fight with the probes, but this is so much damage. What a back and forth. What a wild game of StarCraft. Two of the best players in the world pulling out cheese against each other. The Ling all in after the cannon rush is going to be successful. And there he goes. Snow gets taken down and Solkey ties up the series. That was ridiculous. I'm going to go back and rewatch this. So that I can just see the the absolute miracle that was this this cannon rush, because it really should not have been possible to make this happen. Let's just rewatch. Let's see the the glory <laughs> of Snow's cannon rush. Look at that targeting on from the two probes. This one gets taken down. That was a very nice kill from these three drones. He sets up what looks like a wall on this side baiting the drones into jumping over and then once they do jump over quickly cancel and make a run for the actual target of the cannon rush which is this side how was that still like it it went over this side i really thought that that was not going to be able to jump the wall but he makes the pylon and still gets over that wall so incredible the control here from snow and the mind game of going behind this side making sulky think that was tight because you, you saw it later the uh links can just go right by that so crazy and he gets the drone too that's just wild dude if snow had defended a little bit better off after this rush, he would have been in such a good position. It's wild to even think about. But Sulky really handled it well. And his follow-up Ling rush uh, turned out to be successful. Very well played by him. Let's jump into our next one. Well, Snow showing us that he has a few tricks up his sleeve. He's the purple Protoss in the top left-hand corner. And Sulky over here. Able to get that quick win where he probably shouldn't have been able to. Snow did a fantastic cannon rush there. He just was a little lacking in his defenses back at home. The two cannons in general is enough to stop any sort of Ling run by, but that was certainly all in moves by Sulky and the amount of Lings that he was able to pump out there after you know making so many to deal with the cannon rush the supplementary links were capable of taking down 
those two cannons and overwhelming the defenses. Really, really interesting games thus far, guys. I hope you're enjoying this series. I've got a ton more games to show you, and I guarantee you, you haven't seen any of these yet because they are from our Chinese friends. They haven't been streamed anywhere aside from like Billy Billy or something like that. Um, and they were kind enough to send us the replay. So once again, shout out to them. We're going to have a forge expansion this time from snow. Will he try another cannon rush? There's some pretty good surface area back here to do so. He's just going to go ahead and block that drone. Force Sulky to take this base down here at the center right. He's going to be okay with that. No big deal for Soul Key to just take that base over there. How many links will he produce? He still doesn't know that it's a forge fast, but he hasn't seen a zealot yet with this overlord. He's going to go ahead and assume forge and only build two links. Everything else into drones now. And a third base will start soon over there at that natural. With the gas to follow immediately after, I imagine. Unless we're going to see something crazy out of Soul Key. Which you can never put completely to rest. There's no... There's no way to discount some sort of crazy play out of him. There's the gas. With the probe inside the main base, I guess we want to keep it pretty standard. You don't want to try something really wild while the Protoss is uh, inside the main watching everything you do. If he was able to kill this probe right away, maybe he would have gone for something a little bit more wacky. But here he's going to be sticking to standard play. The Corsair is going to come out really fast this game. I'm talking 5 minute 30 to six minutes uh probably more closer to to 5 30 so we'll see if the gas was well enough timed by sulky and this uh layer gets finished quick enough to get that spire going and keep overlords alive we've got the overlord flying into the main base just gonna see the cybernetic core for now uh he could potentially just run out after that Go try to hide the overload on the map, but he probably wants to get a little bit more information as to what is coming after the cybernetic score. Like, what is your tech? He's going to see the starport or stargate, excuse me. Now it's time to bail. Now is a fantastic time to bail out. Three sets of lings are coming. The first zealot is out, but we already had four lings. So, what are these extra lings for? That is the question. Is he going to try for a run by? I think that might be the answer. We have the probe over here. It hasn't caught on to the fact that more links have been produced just yet. You can see no drones. Just a few drones here. If he was able to spot the lack of drones in the natural, he would be certainly more concerned than he already is. Than he is at the moment. There's the link speed. We're going to have that run by here in a moment. As soon as the link speed finishes, he'll kill the probe. And then we will see that run by with all of the links, I think. No, he's going to go with his few links first. And yeah, there's just not enough defense here at the natural running straight on in. Going to get on top of the gas probes. Always a good target. Try to kill as many of those as you can. The probe went down on the map. And just drones are coming up behind this. So it's probably going to be a Mutalisk plus Sunken defense. To follow this up but he's going to go after the cannon oh no not able to get that cannon nice pull with the probes making that uh, cannon kill impossible cannon coming up in the main wants to end this zergling harassment as soon as possible great pull of the probes there to pick off another lane not a lot of probes have gone down i think maybe one is all we've seen so very good control out of snow once again handling all of this one overlord likely to go down. He actually needs another overlord before he can start any scourge. So you can see he just got supply blocked. And he can't make scourge. Which is a problem. He starts burrow and then cancels it. Okay. That was a little bit weird. Um, 
this could become a really big issue. Well, we did finally finish another Overlord. So he will get two pairs of Scourge out and then get supply blocked again immediately after. Um, par for the course here, what we're seeing uh, with the amount of chaos that's gone on with the Ling run by and everything and uh, the early Ling aggression and all that stuff or the early aggression. Yeah. Pretty standard stuff. Oh, oh, oh. One drone going to go down. That is unfortunate. Back in here. The links are all going to fall. He gets one zealot. Another drone. Oh, no. Two drones falling. That is rough. That is very, very rough. And so, Solki will be falling further and further behind. His links in the main didn't do much. They were very ineffective at what they were supposed to do, which is actually kill some probes and delay the Protoss player a bit in terms of their economy. Instead, he's actually delayed himself by not getting the over, uh, the, the Spire in time and not getting the, uh, the save on any of these Overlords and not killing any Corsairs and losing two drones. He's put himself into a bit of a rough position. It's so all down to snow just kind of handling things a little bit better and the difficulties of control uh, especially when you've got a bunch of lings in the protoss main base it's it's difficult to hit all of your build timings uh with that type of style but he's actually gonna go for mutas again another big swell of mutas six mutas uh, out on the map we've got a ton of scourge he's gonna ogre it again bunch of sunkins coming up at home to defend this he's gonna put lings in the choke and just go for it let's see where the zealots go he kills the uh oh man he kills the cannon immediately cannon is just gone zealots are gonna make their way into the natural but they are not making their way out if they want to stay and engage it's gonna be painful where are all the corsairs oh okay here they come corsairs are here in the main they're just popping out or right, they came in right as the next Corsair was popping. And they're actually going to beat all the Scourge and push back the Mutas. So this is really well handled by Snow once again. Coming in right as that next Corsair was coming out of the uh, Stargate. Keeping that alive. And now he's out on the map with the DT. He did lose some probes. He lost some money time in the main base. But he's still got 49. 49 is a very good number. we got more Mutas on the way. Which is a bit surprising. He's doubling down into this play. Um, he doesn't have Overlord speed. So it's very hard to get another base out right now. He has an Evolution Chamber finally on the way. But we are very behind in the upgrades. You can see we have one plus one already done. And plus one armor is about to finish. And we haven't even started plus one attack for our Hydralis. Nor do we have a Hydralis Den in fact. So this is just going to be a follow up all in. All in mutas into the main base once again. This is do or die right now for Soul Key. Let's see what he can make happen. Chase this one Corsair. It's a shame he didn't get that. Um, killing off any Corsairs right now would be massive. Loses the Overlord over here at the third. All the drones are going to have to evacuate. And he is just going to pull the Scourge. Try to catch the Corsairs on the flight back. Can he get them? Oh, good pull away there by Snow. Very smart stuff. Uh, this is actually going to go down. Oh, he doesn't get the Corsair out either. That is painful. We might want to go after this Templar Archives. Templar Archives is a great target. We can kill the Templar Archives before Storm finishes. I'm surprised we're not building. <laughs> I'm really shocked that we're not building an Archon right now. The Archon is such a good unit against what we're seeing uh, right now from Zolki. Oh, a lot of these Scourge actually are connecting. Only five remain. Five Corsairs remain. He's going to go after the Nexus. I really would have preferred the, the Templar Archives, but it's still a great kill. Fantastic kill here for uh, what Sulky's done. And he actually popped out more Overlords to save this base. Looks like that DT maybe only got um, some damage on the Sunken. Maybe a couple of kills. That's the max. We're at 45 drones now. And Soul Key's looking better and better. This all-in into the main base play is going to happen again. We're going to go for it for a third time, it looks like. And it's the right choice. 
Um, he's gonna jump on top of these Corsairs. Oh, he gets like the majority of them. Oh man, and that's the last Corsair right there. Storms come out, the Corsairs go down. Now he can just dive on top of the Templar and Snow is out of this game. Great play by Solki. Technical takedown once again. Finishing him with the Mutalisk and Scourge play. Very, very well done. It is so hard to do this, guys. I know he makes it look easy, but Solki is doing so much in order to make this happen. And there, there's just so many spinning plates that are going on at the same time. The three sunken in the natural is brilliant. Three sunkens, a uh, four sunkens at the third base, actually. The placement here is fantastic as well. There was a the moment here where I was a little bit scared for Sulky when the DD got in and the Corsairs killed the Overlords. But he was just doing more damage. He was doing more damage. It forced Sulky, or it forced Snow to, to retreat. He had to send the Corsairs back um, and couldn't just stay here and keep killing Overlords and keep this place detection free so that he could, you know, massacre drones or kill the hatch or whatever. Um, and yeah, just great play from Sulky. He's now ahead. Three to two. Let's jump into our next game. In the first two games of the series, Snow looked so good. He looked so dominating in those first two games. It felt like he really had Sulky's number, but after that last one, I feel like Sulky's hit his stride. And he is starting to pull this series back. Of course, he is now ahead. Uh, some of those games have been a little bit wonky. Like the one with the cannon rush. Oh. Server connection has been lost. I think that might be on my end. I was wondering what was about to happen. Was I about to blue screen or what's going on? But looks like I just lost connection to the server. My computer might be a little bit overheated right now. We're going to go ahead and turn on some fans. We've got... Hatchery out here for Sulky, and he's gonna be happy, I think, with the cross map situation. It's never nice to deal with the gateway opener when you are in close proximity spawns on retro. They just get there so quickly. They get to you so quickly, and the most painful it a situation is when, for example, your Zerg down here. You really want to take your third base here, but the gateway is so close. So luckily for Sulky, he is down in the bottom right-hand corner. He can take his third at the 6 o'clock, and it's still quite a long rush distance to get over there to harass with the Zealots. Um, the Zealot going to come down here to the south. The probe is checking the top right. And I think he's going to be able to identify where the Zerg player is at this point. Sees the Overlord there. He knows that Sulky is in the bottom right. And he's going to go directly to the third. Let's see if he can block this drone from taking the base. The longer you block this, the worse it is for the Zerg player, of course. Got uh, 200 minerals in the bank. But this is just about the time when he wants to drop this base. He actually could have saved Larva and, and just put down the base already. And then built the links a little bit later. But he's being forced to build the links now. And he's still got 300 minerals. You just can't really do anything with it. This probe is going to be annoying. And yeah, we're not going to see Sulky take the base. Oh my god. That was so close. That drone almost got completely sniped. Oh man. That would have been so frustrating. Is this the low HP drone? <gasps> Gotta keep that alive. That is so important right now. Two zealots are making way out on the map. Um, this one zealot behind the mineral patches looks like it's gonna go down. Oh man, great targeting here from Snow. Killing off two more lings. And now the two zealots coming up right now. Can put pressure on this hatchery. Two zealots hit the hatchery fast enough to kill it. Uh, it takes a long time, but eventually it will go down. So he has to cancel. Oh, that's so painful. Oh, it's so bad. It is so, so bad right now. We're going to have to see something else crazy out of Soul Key. His initial game plan, his normal game plan, has gone so off the rails, it's not even recoverable at this point. 
Uh, if Snow is smart, he will drop a bunch of cannons because you know that the Zerg player is hurting. They need to do some sort of an all-in to bring things back. Two Zealots on the front. One cannon starts. Robes are being made. And wow, the hatchery actually goes down. Okay, I'm kind of surprised. But behind this, Hydra's den with speed on the way. He is going to try to Hydra bust. He just wants, he really wants Snow to think that he's taking this base. He does take out that Zealot. Two cannons. Much easier to defend Wallen. So with only three Zealots, he should be able to hold any number of Lings. It's not even a question. This will hold. But will it hold the Hydralis bus that's coming? Because this is... He cancelled. This is so smart. Sulky made it really look like he was going to try and recover. Uh, by throwing down that extra hatchery. But he is not trying to recover at all. He is going all in. And this is actually going to work. I think it's going to work. Stargate is a long ways from completion. A long ways from that Corsair coming out to scout. And speed is done. Speed is done. Four more Hydras on the way. Hydralisk range coming up now. Popping a few more Hydras. He's actually got too much gas. Maybe pulling off pulling one of these off of gas would be good. That's okay. Just constant production of Hydras. He can't actually afford them right now. He needs an Overlord. Um, he's going to pull the trigger here in just a moment. A fourth, fifth Zealot is going to pop. The Hydras have been pulled way over to the side. He's going to bring them in from a, a very strange angle here. Zealots are being really shy right now. They do not want to come out and fight. Corsair is going to head in kind of a funny direction. It's not actually covering the, the Hydralisk attack path very well. But it's going to be sent towards the natural. So it should have picked up on any Hydras that are coming, but... He's going to get here into the natural and see three drones, and he's going to know what's up. He is in a lot of trouble right now. He'll have to pull probes. He'll have to build, like, three cannons. He's got a dragoon on the way. I don't know what that is for, but he drops a cannon. i just going to come running up here. That goon is going to die seconds after it pops. That man was a zealot. He died, became a dragoon, and then died again in two seconds. Now the hydras are going to break through here. And this has been excellently, expertly, expertly disguised by Soul Key, bringing himself into a win from a terrible early game position. Terrible. When you get delayed in the hatchery at the third, and then you have to cancel your third and remake it, it's just so painful. And I think that Snow should have realized, he should have guessed that uh, Sulky wasn't going to try and play a game out against him like that. That he was going to go for some sort of all-in. Um, build another cannon. If you've got like four cannons, this does nothing. Because the production is just not high enough. Um, <clears throat> it's not as strong as a 973 because you, you just don't have the drones. This is like a 9-2, 9-3. So we're missing the 7. <laughs> which means there's just, there's just not a lot. There's not a lot coming out of Sulky. But it's enough if you get here before the Corsair comes out uh, and you hide it well enough. You will be able to break through and that's just what Sulky did. We're going to jump on to our next game. Well, this series is shaping up to be not at all what I expected. We're now on Dark Origin with Sulky in the bottom right, Snow in the top left. And there's been a lot more aggression, a lot more mind games, and a lot more quick finishes than I was expecting. But it's all good. It's all fun and games. Some peak Brood War right here. These two absolute professionals. Top of their respective races. Finding holes in each other's game. And that's why they're here. They're here to improve. And of course to make some money as well. And this probe going to get in here and check out everything that's going on. He sees the overpool. 
It's funny that Sulky threw in the nine pool just one time. He just just slipped it in there. Gave it a shot. And then hasn't really gone for it any longer. I gotta start doing that in my own play, honestly. Just put a nine pool out every once in a while just to see. Just to see if we can get a quick win off of somebody. And get used to kind of playing it out off of a nine pool. Because since I never do nine pool, you know, if I try to mix it into my play, I'm definitely going to screw it up, right? Like, there's not a lot to screw up, but the, the follow up um, macro is a little bit different, of course. Looks like snow. Going to evade the moving shot there. Sulky was trying to do on his probe, and Overlord's going to find the forge expansion. I believe this is actually Nexus first. Nexus first out of snow. Is he just going to lose? I mean, the lings are already out. I think he's going to have to pull a bunch of probes. I didn't even notice that he went Nexus first. Kind of paying more attention to Sulky's play, but now that we see with the Overlord that there's... No cannon done. We're trying to get in here and deal some damage. That's a lot of probes in the entrance way. So unlikely he'll actually make this work. Because the lings are going to have to come in one by one to fight. And the probes are just going to be pulled back. Really, really well done here by Snow. Exactly how you want to hold this. Making it look actually impossible to get any damage done. Maybe if it was a nine pool and this was a nexus first, he could have gotten in and killed. But... Or killed a whole bunch of probes, but here, not even getting one probe and losing two lings. And Snow gets away with the Nexus first. This is a tough situation for Sulky to be in. He made six lings. The four are going to come back here and chase this probe around, but unlikely he'll be able to catch that until speed is done. If Snow is on top of it and really moving, juking and jiving in here. Sulky's going to try his best, but that thing is slippery. Just don't really have much of a speed advantage over it. The follow-up, of course. Gas on the way. Start to mine that now. As the Cybernetic Core coming up. First Zealot going to make its way over here to the third. Put on that extra pressure and force some more Lings out. I mean, the situation, the position for Snow is already fantastic, but this is just making it even better. He's going to take a great trade here behind the mineral patches, and he's going to get critical information from this base about how many drones are being produced. And whether or not there's going to be Hydras popping out anytime soon. Lings are going to have to split up here. As the probe and zealot combo makes its way over towards the natural. Well, the probe is actually going to go into the main. That's interesting. And the other zealot is going to head over here. So he's going to try and force the issue over at the third base. Taking this fight with the four lings is going to yield results for Snow. That's a good mix up from him. And he gets a drone for it as well. That's a big kill. Third zealot is coming up as well. These drones are under serious threat. The Lings are going to arrive now. Five more sets on the way. That's a lot of Lings about to pop out. Sulky wants to stabilize as soon as possible. Every moment that these drones aren't mining. Oh, and he loses another drone. No, that's so bad. Probe finally going to be blocked from getting any further scouting information. Wow, that's a lot of Lings. Wow, that's a lot. He's going to actually throw down a second cannon. Smartly so as well. That is so many links popping out, and he already got drone kills. The temptation to all in right now is huge. What the heck? Drones are being pulled? Oh my god, Sulky's gonna go for it. This is wild. This is absolutely insane. You can see he's still building drones over here, just to keep a an air of normalcy in this game. But he is about to fully all in this. He is going into the back. Five drones, six drones, seven drones are gonna be pulled. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight total. He's going to mine this out. So, Snow sees this. He sees this right now. He's got the pylon back here. Everything is revealed. He's going to start to build a pylon on the high ground. He knows he has to build it quickly because the lings are going to be flooding through in just a matter of seconds. Drones are being transferred over towards the natural. We've got the Corsair in the main, killing off some overlords. The Mutalists are going to start. 
Scourge are going to start as well. This opening has been... Uh, th this back area has been popped open. He can start to move through. But there are Zealots on the high ground. A lot of probes here to fight as well. And he will be building cannons up there. So there's really not much that can be done right now. Soul Key is getting completely shut down in every which way possible. A cannon going to start in the natural mineral line. Main mineral line has a cannon as well. Corsair heading back home with one kill. This one also with one kill. So two overlords were lost. Looks like he's finally going to just pull the trigger on killing these zealots at the back. But what has he gained from getting rid of this mineral patch? Nothing, almost nothing has been gained through this play. It's such a shame. He is so far behind now. I just can't see a, way, a route for Sulky to come back in this game. Maybe some sort of weird Mutalisk all in. Maybe something of that nature could try to bring him back in this game. But as long as Snow plays defensively, as long as he's careful and builds the proper number of cannons like gets two cannons in this main he has two cannons here he's gonna get another cannon over here most likely as well i just don't see him getting broken we are redroning now up to 30 at this point but it is still a dire situation six mutilis on the way armor is coming up for the mutis as well seven now in production we do not have overlord speed although we do have overlords in each base no no overlord over here <gasps> that's not good we need an overlord to detect this DT. Maybe he can run out and snipe it since he sees it coming in now. The links are here ready. Can he actually get that? Yeah, he will get that, I think. Oh, the overlord's just barely out of range. Can he get it? Ah, he's not going to. Oh, he's going to actually surround it. There we go. He does get the surrounding kill. He has so many links right now. So many links. They're going to be so useless. Now that plus one's done and zealots are going to start being masked out, they're going to do absolutely nothing. So it's really, really tough right now for Sulky. He is getting a couple more hatches now. He has the Sim City back at home ready. Going to lose that one Corsair. It was a sacrificial Corsair to try and figure out what's coming from Sulky. He didn't see anything in this natural. He probably only saw a few drones. Maybe not even seeing the hatchery coming up. He definitely didn't see all of these mutas. And he's moving out with zealots to pressure. This could be a big moment. We could see a lot of zealots go down for free. Uh, he's actually splitting four zealots off just to go and find out what's going on. Uh, he's going to hide the mutas once again. There's some scourge. There's the one sunken colony. And there are lings. He's going to bring the mutas forward. Okay, he will be revealing the mutas now. The mutas get revealed. He clears up the zealots. No problem. Might lose like one drone. Potentially. No, not even one drone goes down. So that was a pretty good hold. Over here at the natural. Again, a very good defensive position. Nice Sim City from Soul Key. So he's making some good moves right now. What is the follow-up though? Four more mutas on the way. Still making mutas right now. That is wild. He is going to go all in into the main, I guess four cannons here though i think it's safe to say that sulky knows his game he's got an archon he's got what is this eight corsairs yeah eight corsairs yikes that is a lot of anti-air to deal with even with this number of mutas i don't know if it's feasible we've got extra sunken colonies being added uh, a lot of them in fact just to make sure that he doesn't die to a counter attack if it's just pure zealot comes across or a zealot archon uh, he could be in a lot of trouble so he's gonna wait for the corsairs to move out this is a big moment for soul key he's waiting for the corsairs to leave to go across the map and then he's gonna try and dive oh wait he's just gonna go in right now pushing back the corsairs the scourge are going to force these to run away and the mutas can deal some damage as they run as they try to bail out the storm upgrade is not done yet Scourge are here. They're ready to fight. If the Corsairs do try to engage, this is so many cannons to deal with. But the Archon is coming back. Can he push everything away? Ooh, the Archon getting a lot of damage on these Scourge. Scourge going to pull back and away once again. Archon picking off a lot of these Scourge. And they are very low at this point. He will have to back away. He cleared all four of the cannons. 
and killed a few probes, but we're still 44 probes uh, strong here for Sol or for Snow. So Sulky, I mean, he's not going to be able to get in here and finish this off. He's trying to kill the the Nexus. He spent so much money on Scourge. They're finally starting to pay off. He gets a few kills. Great storm there, actually dealing with a lot of those Scourge, and the <laughs> Nexus is going to survive with 30 HP. Are you kidding me? Kill that. Oh my goodness. Almost give me a heart attack. Soul key. Letting that survive right to the very end. Giving Snow a glimmer of hope that that might actually make it through all the damage that the Mutas were putting out. But finally it goes down. We have Lurkers on the way now. Or Lurker upgrade, I guess, is on the way. Lurker uh, is not quite there just yet. There's some lings doing a little counter attack over at this base. They managed to force the cancel again. These zealots are going to have to be pulled back. This is a brilliant game, what we're seeing out of Soul Key. He's playing such a scrappy game. Oh, this is such a dangerous fight right now. The Archon with seven kills gets a big shot on these mutas. Finally picking off that Archon, but he takes one last final shot. Dealing a lot of damage to these mutas. And now the Scour Corsairs are going to come through. Where are the Scourge to help this? Oh, he tries to split, but it's a massacre. Coming in from behind now. Scourge are going to try to get some connections. Unlikely they'll be able to do anything, though. And the mutas are all but dead. A few more have been added on. More links popping out right now. Let's take a look at the upgrades. We've got none for our Zerg player. Plus one, plus one armor, I think is what we have. Plus one armor, plus one attack, yeah. So two upgrades ahead right now. And about to have a third. Whereas armor is going to finish and melee attack. Immediately into melee attack. So Soul Key going to jump forward in tech to try and make this into an even game. He's done some damage. He's slowed down his opponent somewhat. He's fallen behind in upgrades by doing these gambits. But now he's going to try to leverage what little position he has to fly forward into Lurker Ling and late game as soon as possible. The Hive is just about done. We've got triple upgrade rolling. He does not want to build Hydras right now except to make them into Lurkers. But the Corsair fleet is still dominate, domineering. It's still scary. We've still got seven of them. Running around, potentially picking off Overlord. Still no Overlord speed. Sulky is cutting every tiny little corner that he can to try and make this work. Jumping on top of the cannons is not going to yield much result because the storm was just fantastic. Dealing so much damage to those lings. We do not have a, an observer yet. Observatory is on the way, but this lurker is actually out of range. Okay, that will get picked off by just a pure, just by a storm. So he'll probably drop another storm there just to get rid of that. Lurker is eating up quite a few storms, but not getting much progress other than that. Bunch of mutas pooled in the back here. He'll probably come forward at some point to try and snipe some Templar. Uh, if the Corsairs overcommit to killing overlords or something like that, he might uh, loop around and try to dive on the army. No fourth base from Soul Key, but that's okay. It's not too bad right now. The reason being we have Hive and we're going into Defiler. You can be on even bases for a little while as a Zerg player. As long as you have Hive and all your upgrades rolling. You have a late game opportunity. Let's see where the Lurkers are right now. He's going to have to push over here to this right hand side. Or he's actually going to have to own the middle because... He can't really mine on a fourth base as Zerg um, in this uh, on this map. The fourth base you have to ha you have to own the middle in order to mine off of that. I don't see crackling upgrade just yet. Seems like he's forgotten that upgrade. He should be starting that any seconds. He starts Groove Spines, so eventually he will want Hydras, of course. It's just kind of an afterthought upgrade, but I would really like to see him start. Um, adrenal because it's so necessary he's building so many links and he's finally got some upgrades on these right he's got one one 
If they had Adrenal, they would be much, much stronger. Doing some little counterattacks here and there, moving these Lings around, looking for what kind of damage he can do. There's no base down here to snipe. And Snow is taking a base in the top right, so... Yes, we can be okay on the equal number of bases, but... It is a problem. A real problem if the Protoss gets more bases than us. It's kind of an untenable situation. There we go. Finally sniping down some units in the middle of the map. How long is he going to forget this upgrade? Because, I mean... Oh, wait. Does he, does he actually have it? I'm looking at the Lings attacking there. Does he actually have it? It's, sometimes it's hard to tell. Oh, kill that. Kill that. Oh, he just barely killed it before the Overlord went down. Some Scourge come forward. Another Overlord is here and available. Ooh, the Storm actually killed the Defiler there. That's pretty annoying. He's going to have to get another Defiler up here ASAP. Or he might just lose his position. Yeah. I, I don't think the... No, okay. The Link attack speed is done. He does have it. He does have the uh, upgrade. Yeah, that's attacking uh, like it's on crack for sure. Oh, big army coming forward here. Just one lurker though in the mix. That's going to be picked off pretty quickly. The mutas are doing a lot of damage though. Picking off quite a few Templar. He gets every Templar, but he's got nothing to defend uh, up on this high ground. And there are still some observers. So this should be broken. There's no reason right now that so Sulky should be able to hold on to this base. Absolutely none. Good storm there to just start to push these mutas away. He's buying a little bit of time with this this mutalis flock. Giving himself an opportunity to maybe get some more lurkers on high ground. Maybe get another defiler to the front. If he can do that, maybe he can hold that high ground. But right now, this is just a placeholder. It's waiting to be killed. Coming out to the middle right now. And Sulky looking to take a big fight. Let's see if he can take out this army that Snow's put together. First plague of the game. This is the way to come back as a Zerg player. If you're really far behind in the mid and early game. If you can make it to late and start to throw down plagues on everything. There are opportunities to make a comeback. Great plague again. Oh, he kind of missed. He kind of whiffed there, honestly. If he'd done a little bit of a better job with that plague, he could have gotten a much bigger ball of Zealots. Brought a lot more of them into the low HP, but he comes back, goes for another one. Basically, all the Zealots have been plagued at this point, and he's holding enough of the middle. He's not holding the whole middle, but he's holding enough of the middle. Oh, gosh. I didn't know that those were two stacked Lurkers. Oh, man, that really hurts. He's holding enough of the middle where you can't come over here and storm the drones. So this is still playable. Still playable. Although it's definitely not Zerg favored at this point. Um, the plagues are really helping out right now. Look at how quickly the zealots are falling. Take a look at the upgrades. 2-2 two, two, and 2-2. Two, two. So he's even. He is even on upgrades. To where the Protoss player is at. Which is massive. You really want to be ahead on upgrades for the zealots so they can two-shot. Right now, the Lings are just eating these Zealots alive. Oh my goodness. And he's going to get all of the Observers. Just about. One more Observer coming forward. Lings being rallied up. And Zealots are going to come down to assist. Pretty big army still on the field for Snow. And he will try to take this base over in the center left. Let's see if he can make it happen. It feels to me like we're going to have just a real drawn out... Tug of war play between these two from this point on. With Soul Key trying to get up this ramp and Snow just defending from high ground with storms. Big flag there. Dark Storm as well. That's definitely going to help things out. The Defiler does go down. So getting rid of that pesky unit. And pushing out down here under the low ground. Getting rid of the Lurkers as well is good. You might be able to catch the army of Snow moving between the natural and the fourth base but seems like snow is actually ready to push out in the middle we cannot allow like we 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 can't allow this base to go down but we really can't allow snow to take the middle this base is going to try to come up right now but just four zealots broken off could easily go and take that out dark swarm lurker 
All great stuff here for Soul Key. He's looking for plagues. He's looking. Oh, he doesn't have enough energy for plague. That's a problem. Now he does. Now he could go forward for the plague. A lot of these are already plagued, though. Probably good to go for the units on the left hand side, the ones that haven't been plagued yet. But he goes for these ones down here. Adding a little bit more chili sauce to the uh, recipe. Some more consumes going down and he should be moving forward to place another plague in a moment but instead going for a counterattack across these bridges now this is a gambit this is a real gambit by soul keys running into some serious storms uh and just getting lit up this is not looking good for him just yet he needs to consume and get another dark swarm down if he wants to continue to push the issue he is going to be getting some of these uh templar maybe all right, the Templar actually just walk forward and storm everything, so he won't be able to get those Templar. And more Lings are going to come forward. Archons are being made en masse, and things are looking better and better for Snow now. Snow is holding on everywhere, and he's getting great trades. Every time Sulky tries to move, every time he tries to engage anywhere, the storms have been brutal. Uh, he's eating up so many Lings. And there's really not too much that he can do aside from this. Guardian play. You'll love to see it. He's going to come over here and try to hit some Templar. Maybe try to hit this gas. Cause some storms. And then later on maybe uh, bust up into that base. Oh no. The drones are transferring. This is 12 drones. Maybe even more. Heading down to the bottom center. And we've already got snow in between the rally uh, and the defense. Oh man. Lurkers are going to come forward and burrow, but that's so many Archons. They are going to get squashed. And down here uh, at the 6 o'clock, the Sunken Colonies are not done. Soul Key leaves this game. He played a great defensive game or a great comeback game, I'll say. There were opportunities here where he could have potentially brought this game back. Some of the dives with the Mutas were really good. Um... The delay on the third base was very strong. But the transition into Crackling Lurker, it just didn't work out the way he was hoping. He got a lot of great plagues. He got a lot of good value out of his units, but the storms were a bit too strong. Snow just playing a great defensive game as well. Just taking bases and defensing them exactly as you're meant to do. Uh, and Sulky just wasn't able to slow that down enough. GG. We're going to jump into our next game. Okay, just a few games left to go in this series, but it's been a banger. Thank you guys all for joining me today. I'm looking forward to doing more of this series from the Chinese partners, our friends over in China who have been getting more and more into Brood War and having a lot of great results in the ASL. From excellent, excellent players over there in China. And I will be uh, casting most likely some Chinese versus Korean play as well uh, for those Chinese tournaments. Just to see, you know, where they're measuring up and how they're measuring up. That's how you can improve is by playing against these guys. Can't be afraid of them. You've got to go on ladder. That's what DeWalt knows. That's what any good strong player knows. You have to play with the best to be the best. That's why DeWalt goes to... Korea himself and puts himself out there, you know, doesn't know the language or at least, you know, he doesn't speak it fluently. Goes over there, does a bunch of practice, plays with the best. What are we seeing here? A, oh my goodness. Is Snow just going to die? Forge just starts now. Lings are on the way. How many lings are we going to make? Makes two sets. He's got his third base. Or he's got his uh, second base over here at the third. Can't take his natural just yet. Let's see if the timing of the lings popping out. Feels like Snow has just barely timed this out correctly. Where he won't take damage once again. Getting away with the Nexus first. Again, pretty rough. Honestly, for Soul Keep. It's, it's not a great spot. It 
it really goes or it really shows that um you know snow has a bead on what sulky's up to he knows that he's he likes to go night or an overpool he doesn't really like to go nine pool or he doesn't do it often oh great surround there as well and an awesome pullback from snow but now he's kind of out of range of the cannon Cannon's not going to get any shots off. And has he done enough damage to these? He's actually lost some probes. And the links get inside. So now the worthwhile... Like, was this really worthwhile going for Nexus first? I don't know. Remains to be seen. Look at how far back we can run with this <laughs> Ling. Just denying this kill for so long. Five probes off the line. And the rest of the probes are not doing well back, um, back over here. Wow, this Ling actually survived. That's crazy. Oh, he catches. He catches with the returning probes onto those Lings. The Ling runs in here and just dies. That's unfortunate. But some good delaying was happening. Um, now, one thing I don't like is we don't have an Overlord in production, which is rough. That's very rough. So going to do Hydralis Den. More lings, more drones. Interesting. So we're definitely going to bust. No question here in my mind. This is for sure a bust. We got 19 of 19. He's just started an overlord. Four lings are about to pop. A zealot's walking across the map. He needs to catch this. Make sure it doesn't get any information. The probe is going to be active on the map as well. So this is going to be hard to stop. He can't really make anything right now because oh, he actually extractor trick to get another uh another ling set out um because this is this is such a bad supply block right now he does finally get that overload out the zealot is going to try to run by he can easily walk into the main oh man yeah he's gonna get in here he's gonna see everything probe comes by regardless of the ling speed he is gonna get that information so he knows the bust is imminent that is huge, huge information here for Snell, who just immediately throws down a second cannon. A lot of lings just came out. Panic lings here from Sulky. He knows how bad the situation is. This is not where he wants to be, but he'll have to play it out once again from a deficit. It feels like a lot of these games have seen Sulky in a pretty bad deficit, but he's always managing to find little ways to get back in. He manages to slip three more links into the main. This is a great play. This is going to help him to slow down gas mining for snow. It's going to buy some time. It's going to force zealots to chase. It's going to slow down, hopefully, Sulky's uh, production. It's going to allow him to see, you know, how many Stargates were made. How far along are we in the tech? How much time do I have before Storm is available? That is the big key takeaway from the main base scout he knows he's got a lot of time here he knows that there is no citadel we will see the citadel here soon i think as it just gets laid down in the main should get scout scouted pretty soon we are now at six minutes in first corsair headed out on the map but hydras are here to threaten the bust more hatcheries being laid down though plenty of drones so it's not like this is all in this is definitely one of those poke your natural and then fall back into a strong macro play this link over here is so funny it's been in the main base for so long or is this the link that was yeah okay this is the link that was hitting the assimilator that one link remember that that was getting chased by the probes i don't think that's the same link I kind of assumed that it was there for a second, but now I realize that's kind of silly. We've got Hydras here shooting the forge, and he can actually access the forge from this angle. Well, that is huge. Able to find just the right angle here with the Hydras to be able to pick that off. He could also pick off the gateway, I assume, if he uh, gets the perfect spacing on that. That'll be uh, one part of the production that be cut off um we do not have a templar archives which is a little bit funny where's the templar archives 
Double Forge. No Templar Archives. This is scary. You know, if uh, Soul Key just made Hydras right now and went for the bust, I think he could just win this game. I don't care how many cannons you have uh, and how many Zealots. If you just go five hatch all in Hydra, there's not enough space back here to build enough cannons to stop it. If you're not going into Storm, you're just going to delay Storm this long. He's gone into three gateways. Pure Zealot production. He's going to want to run out and just start attacking these Zealots here. Or attacking these uh, Hydras here in a moment. He's waiting for Ground Weapon, but more specifically, he's waiting for Speed. Once that Speed is done, we can start to aggress out here on the map. We've managed to stabilize into 36 drones, which is definitely a good amount. Throwing a Ling in here, sacking a Ling to just see how many Zealots there are. He sees the number, and he's he's not too happy with what he sees. He knows that this is going to be a huge wave of Zealots coming out. There is finally the Templar Archives. We're at nine minutes, and it's not even done yet. So there was an opportunity for Soul Key to potentially bust. You don't even need an Overlord to do this bust, by the way. Overlord is there, but you actually don't even need it. I think he might have seen that. Yeah, he did. Okay, good. Um... Could be devastating if you just pull back your high just a little bit and then the zealots manage to slip out on the map and they hit this third base without you knowing about it your hydras are still sitting here oh man what a pain that could be just a straight up loss from a game that's potentially winnable now hydras are being brought together with their full mass with this number of hydras um we actually don't need to keep too many back at home because there's only two Corsairs available. With this number of Hydras, you can just straight up fight the Zealots. And especially with Lings to body block. And with no plus one attack here. This is a pretty reasonable fight for Soul Key. Especially with good micro. And you know he's got good micro. 43 drones have been produced. He knew that he was going to be able to win that fight. So only producing drones and now getting into Lurker. I'm liking Sulky's position a little bit better now. It's feeling a lot stronger. The lateness of the Templar, the lack of ability to deal any damage with these Corsairs, um, the way that Sulky picked off the plus one upgrade, and his control thus far with the Hydras, giving me a lot of hope right now for Sulky when. I felt like he was quite far behind earlier. I'm now feeling pretty good about his chances. He will pick off this uh, Dark, Temp da Dark Templar, excuse me, but not before taking quite a bit of damage. Lurker gets kicked, picked off too. That's trying to push forward. Just that two Lurker attack right before you have um, Observers was looking promising, but now the Lurkers have been picked off. Going for a kill on one Dragoon. A good snipe there, but... A lot of Hydras were lost for that uh, prize. Picking that single Dragoon was a costly trade. And we don't have double upgrades going anymore. I think we might be going all in. That is a possibility. He does start this base. He's got to spread out these Lurkers a little bit better than that, though. You do not want to be eating uh, uh, really big storms on these. Good job pushing in here. No storm coming out of snow. A little bit surprising. He finally casts the storms. I thought he would be using them more so to get rid of the lurkers. But oh man, he has to cancel his his uh, nexus there at the last moment. And Sulky will get in here and break this position. Hmm, that was a bit strange. Snow, I thought he had what it took to just hold the high ground here. But he let the Lurkers run up. They were so stacked, he didn't get a storm on that. And as the Lurkers are pushing forward, he didn't cast his storm until really late. Uh, on the Hydras alone, which were able to dodge out of the way for the most part. And Solki takes a pretty quick victory. Finishing off that third. And now will be able to saturate this fourth. So he can continue this on into a late game. From this position, he's going to be feeling very strong. He starts double upgrades, gets those rolling once again. He should be adding on a Queen's Nest relatively soon. We don't want to add it on too quickly. 
Um, because we do want to get a, enough lurkers out to defend this big push that's about to hit the field. We need to get enough hydras out as well. But that should be a priority here for our Zerg player. Get that hive rolling so that we can hit our late game stride. Third Evo Chamber, of course, always a strong add as well. Keeping this high ground controlled. Gonna force the Nexus to go down at this mineral only instead. Snow feeling confident that he can defend from this high ground over here. Sulky gathering up a lot of Hydras though to maybe make an attempt on that. If he gonna come in and kill this third, that would be lights out for Snow because Snow actually needs not only this base to finish, but then he needs another base. So you can see he's moving to take that base right away. And he should have power enough to challenge Sulky out on the map. Um, I don't know if he can push into any positions right now. But he can definitely challenge. And in just a few moments, these patches are going to run out. He starts the transfer of workers to continue his mining. He will be on two bases once again here in a moment. Uh, once this is mined out. And those other bases are established. He's going to come over here and clear out this high ground area. I'm just worried about the counter attack right now. It's just coming directly for his uh, base over here at the mineral only. The lurkers get into a great position on high ground to defend. He's kind of gotten ahead of this army and is defending from high ground. Even snipes the observer. That might be it. Guys, this might be it. That was such a sick observer snipe. Snow taps out. Great move there from Soul Key. I almost want to go back and just take another look at that. That was so professional. So well done. Coming from this kind of detrimental spot to a win. Really, really impressive stuff. Um, and not even like a long drawn out win where you finally win after, you know, getting lots of plagues and stuff. Just making a brilliant move. You can see... He waited for this attack to come through. Right as this army moved, he had all of these Hydras and Lurkers ready, and especially the Lurkers, which take this high ground position uh, outside of the range of these Dragoons. Didn't have enough cannons here just yet. Storms were just making their way over here. Snow got a little greedy. Let's be honest. Snow got a little bit greedy. He wanted to take this position so he can maybe start a Nexus over here soon. But he has two Nexuses on the way right now. It's not a necessary move. And Sulky takes advantage of it perfectly. Oh, we're going super fast once again. Taking this position. All you need to do is snipe an Observer. He knows it. He goes for it. He has the Overlord right there in position. He knows that if you can't push through the Lurkers here, making this army walk all the way around means that this is a dead base. 100%. Snow knows it as well. That goes down, and that's basically a GG right there. Nothing that Snow can do to break this. He would have to spend so much time walking around, getting his reinforcements together. This base would be gone. He would be sitting on one base for a long period of time, whereas Sulky is booming ahead here in the economy. He doesn't have that Queen's Nest going, but he made a remarkable strong play for that fourth base or for that third base picking that off nets him a win really good play from soul key snow falling a bit behind now game number nine actually our final game of the night i know i said 10 games but now that i took a look at the replays i can see that one of these was actually a redo or a uh, a restart so it is nine games. It's exactly the same as Ultimate Battle, the Korean Ultimate Battle that we know from YouTube. Um, if you guys haven't seen that, it's only casted in Korean, unfortunately. There's no English cast that I know of right now that uh, is available uh, for that. Sad news, of course. But uh, at least we have this. Hey, it's pretty much Ultimate Battle. Same, same players, same quality of players. Right, Snow and Soul Key going nine games for money, each game being worth a certain amount. And I think you get a prize, or I imagine you'd get a prize for a victory as well. Uh, I'll put the score, I'm going to 
mess around with this. I'm going to put the score on the screen. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. Um, since this is a new series, guys, you'll have to bear with me. I haven't got this all figured out just yet. But I'll put the score somewhere on the screen. And we'll keep doing that uh, as time goes on. I, I don't remember who is ahead right now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But like I said, it'll be on the screen. So you guys will know. And I'm just sitting here. I'm just enjoying these games while I'm casting. I'm not really thinking about too much else uh, other than what kind of great plays are going to come from these two players. What kind of fantastic strategies are we going to come up with next? Because both of these guys have shown some great creativity. But I'm most inspired by Sulky, of course. He's a Zerg player. Fellow Zerg player. But he's just been showing some amazing comeback ability. Some comeback potential in a lot of these games. He's been down and out or seriously injured in multiple, multiple rounds. But has always seemed to manage to come back. We've got the drone scouting down here in the bottom left. He's not going to see a base, so he's going to send that up to the top left. But his overload will spot the gateway first in just a moment. Likely we're going to see a drone take this base over here. No, he's going to avoid the probe and then come down here. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. Yeah, that is the case. Overlord spots two zealots on the move. And so lings will be incremented out here slowly but surely. Hatching a little army for himself. Soul key. Going to be ready to deal with this zealot threat. Oh, he's going to take bottom left. Interesting. So he doesn't take six. This is going to throw off snow by quite a lot. Snow is going to be confused. Okay, not taking six. Are you actually taking this base? No. So where's the hatch? What is going on? Is it like a ling all in? He's going to send the probe in to find out. And when he sees lings popping, he might be a little bit scared. Um, there's a lot of larva just sitting around. Lings are going to come up to the natural. Start to poke. Two zealots are making their way back though. Should be enough to deal with this. With three zealots, you can definitely handle this attack. Keeping all the lings alive, though, is impressive. And Snow gets in there. He sees what he needs to see. He knows that there's no, like, uh, speedling all in. And no hydrogen either. So he's going to be feeling pretty confident there's a hatchery on the map. We'll scout that down here in the bottom left. Getting into a drone production. Has ling speed just about done. There is going to be a significant threat of zealots, though, on the map here pretty soon. Going to have to be wary of that. Lair. Coming up. We will be seeing a spire here shortly. And how far along in the curve it is. Stargate has started. Lair's not done. I believe in him. I never know exactly the... Uh, the timings on these things. I just know that if I get a 430 gas or a 450 gas and everything's perfect, like if I hit my lair right as the gas hits 100, if I get my drones in right as the gas is done, and I hit my lair right as the, the gas hits 100, and I get my spire right as the lair finishes, then I should be good. <laughs> That's what I know. Um, the timings, aside from that, I don't know exactly when you're supposed to start your layer to get this, uh, to have it in time for a gateway first Corsair to get to your natural or to get to your base. Those, uh, those are a mystery to me. Maybe I'll figure that out someday. Maybe I'll write all those timings down at one point, try to memorize them so that I can improve uh, in my gameplay. I haven't actually been playing much recently. I'm on vacation right now. So I haven't been um, playing a whole lot of Brood War. I was doing the 10 games, 10 games a day until I hit A. I might restart that series once I get back home, but 
for now. It's on a brief hold. We've got Zealots starting to move out, but they're not ready with the side blades yet with the upgrades. Corsairs moving into position, checking out the business here. What Sulky's up to. I'm going to start to hit this Overlord, but of course, uh, the Scourge started before the Overlord got damaged. Now, I've, I've been wrong about this in the past, but let's see if he can still get this. All right, I guess he gets one Overlord. So that's going to go down. And the Scourge will be directed towards that Corsair. Looks like they're not going to be able to catch it. This is quite a lot of Zealots moving into position. Do we have Sunkins? We've got one going to finish, a second on the way. Zealot attack is about to finish up. He's hitting right before Zealot's speed is done. So this is a really good attack, honestly, from snow but can he actually defend with drones all right that's a pretty good drone drill sunken colony goes down immediately but the drones are doing a pretty decent job of holding the line lings are going to come up as well he only lost a couple of drones sunken colonies did a great job of tanking looks like the uh, zealots will get picked off in the end more sunken colonies will be made and balance has been restored to nature drones are mining The pesky zealots have been pushed away. And nature is healing. We've got creep colonies coming back up once again. He needs those to deal with the zealots now. As he has not fully committed into air. Although this series has been so air heavy. I wouldn't be surprised if Snow overreacted to that. Built a bunch of anti-air. He's already got five horses. It looks like he feels that's enough for now. He's going to come in and try to push away Overlords and overwhelm this position with DTs. Let's see if he can make it happen. There's a few Scourge lying around here and there. So I'm not liking the uh, the chances. You've got to spread out these Scourge, though. You can't be taking the engagement. Oh, this is some just some sexy micro from Snow. He's trying to do that patrol micro. Look at him go. Can he make it work? Can he actually kill all these Scourge? Oh, he loses one Corsair, but another comes forward. And with this extra Corsair, he can start to kill the Overlords. Okay, another Corsair, or another Scourge does hit. As the Overlords go down though, the DTs will get in here. More Scourge popping out, another Overlord finishes. Can he actually get some hits? Only gets one hit there. Overlord's gonna die. This is getting dicey. This is getting very, very dicey right now for uh, Soul Key. He's going to lose some drones. Another Overlord does pop. But he's going to get into the main. He can destroy this hatchery. I don't think we have Overlord speed. Didn't see it. We have some more Lings. We should be able to come and save this base. But it looks like he's going to be able to deny that. So at least Soul Key loses his base. You know, we've got... Snow throwing away a lot of units and still on two base. So he really did need to stop this from going up. Another hatch going to pop over here at the third. Sulky is going to be frustrated by lo uh, about losing that, but it's not the end of the world. He's still got three sunkins, a very nice wall. And he's making eight mutas. His scourge are all here in the main. While the Corsairs are dealing damage over near the third. The DTs could come from behind while the Zealots try to pressure, like go after the Evolution Chamber and punch through at the same time. Let's see if he goes for it. He's going to go for the Evolution Chamber. Archon is hitting the egg right now, which is a little bit crazy. Looks like this Evolution Chamber will live and the Sunken Colonies target down that Archon very quickly. Did I miss the Scourge? Uh, where are the Corsairs? Okay, I might have missed some Corsairs going down. Um, I will picture and picture that. It looks like quite a few actually got picked off during that fight. That was um, a wild move from Snow, but you know what? Soul Key hangs on with flying colors. He's even going to kill another Corsair. And there's still two DTs in his base, so he's not going to be able to get that fourth yet. And he kills another Corsair, and he's going to drive 
the probes out of this main. Great plays here by Soul Key. Taking at real advantage of all the Corsairs that were killed earlier. Another Corsair going to come forward. We'll be able to deal some damage. The Dragoons are doing a good job. Scourge comes forward. Going to force this back. We have a Storm almost done. Damn, he takes some more damage on that Corsair. He's actually going to run out over here. Zel Zerglings and Mutas attacking into this third base. Zealots are going to be able to hold that for now. But more Mutas are coming to try and break this base before it's fully online and operational. We've got only two Corsairs back at home. Some Dragoons are popping out. He needs cannons in the main, but he's just going to bounce back and forth. Solki is just going to bounce back and forth and make this uh, almost impossible. Excellent play here by Solki. He is tearing snow limb from limb. I mean, he's going to start a cannon in the main, but there's no way for him to hold on to a third. Absolutely no way. And he's just going to bounce back over to here. This is what I'm talking about. If you... Come into the main, force every, all the defenses over here. Then you go into the third, and then force all the defenses to the third, and then come back to the main. There's, you're never going to be able to get cannons up in time. You're never going to be able to uh, catch up in the deficit that you're in. We saw some brilliant control from Snow earlier with his Corsairs, but it's starting to fail him now. He's at 31 pros to the 45 workers of... Solki. Now, Solki is mostly on Ling Muta, which is not the greatest against the fully teched out, kitted up Protoss army with Storm and Archons and Zealots and Corsairs. That is going to die very, very quickly, but he's starting to transition into Hydra. He's cleared out the bottom left. He will start that fourth base. His position is looking fantastic. This is almost a no-win position for, for Snow right now. He's 20 supply behind. Even more than that now. Almost 40 supply behind. 30 supply now. But more probes are going to go down. Snow really can't afford to lose any of those. But he can't afford to make cannons either. He can't afford to make a bunch of cannons in his mineral line. Because he knows that a fourth base is coming up for Soul Key. He has to push out and deal damage or get like a double expand those are his only two options if he doesn't do one of those he's just gonna get choked out in this game more mutas than sulky knows what to do with he's got over 12 mutas could go for snipes on some templar could just fight the army as long as he doesn't get stormed the Mutas are still going to do pretty well, especially if the Scourge connect with these Corsairs. This is a pretty small army that Snow's trying to push out with right now. And he's going to force the Storm immediately. Here comes the Mutas. Can he get the Storm on? Oh my god, he storms his own units. Oh man, the Hydra number is way too big. There it is. Snow taps out. Sulky domination in this game. Domination. So strong. With his defense and follow-up play. I gotta copy this guy. I gotta record this build. This is in in some incredible play. Coming from Sulky. But maybe it would be very difficult to copy. The way that he was moving his Scourge and Mutas. The way that he was controlling everything while macroing up perfectly. This sunken defense worked out fantastically. I am surprised to see it like this. It feels like he did this on purpose, right? He builds back a little bit. He's not like hugging the wall with his sunken colonies, which a lot of players will do. Why does he not build like that? Is it because the larva won't be able to hatch on this side? I wonder, maybe the larva hatch on the outside and he doesn't like that. Maybe it's something to do with Dragoon pushes. Like if the Dragoons come running up, it's pretty hard for them to hit the Sunkins behind. If they can just stand right there and hit the Sunkins behind the wall in, maybe that's no good for Sulky. Maybe he's found that placing them one hex back is going to be better against drag 
Dragoon pushes. I'm not sure. But some real brilliance coming out of Soul Key. Gotta analyze this replay to really understand what went wrong here for Snow. But guys, we're gonna be done this series now. It's just the first of many though. So stick around. Hit the subscribe button. You know what to do. Keep an eye out for more games like this. More series like this because we have many more to come. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.